Good day and welcome to STO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, it's been reported that on September the 16th, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has resumed official contacts with Russia for the first time since 2021. Now, this has prompted a strong reaction in a number of Western countries. It's therefore pertinent to ask the question as to why one of the principal instruments of Western financial dominance and control is planning to dispatch its representatives to Moscow. Now, what will be the focus of these negotiations and what are the IMF's expectations from Russia? Well, the IMF has decided to resume its direct contact with Russia, making its first contacts, as I said, since 2021. Now, this has prompted expressions of outrage from a number of European countries, mainly the Baltics, Poland, Belgium and the UK, who are the usual Russophobic lapdogs screaming in outrage, who view this as an unwarranted concession to Moscow. However, there are differing opinions as to what the IMF's objectives might be. As Annette Kobe said, she's the IMF resident representative in Russia. She stated, the fund's consultations with Russian authorities will take place in various formats. She said, the team will hold discussions remotely from the 16th of September and after which they will travel to the country for in-person meetings. Now, the IMS last annual mission to Russia was conducted physically in November 2019, prior to the onset of the global pandemic. Now, the most recent online consultations were back in October 2021. Now, the IMF's decision to resume consultation with the Russian authorities and send a delegation to Russia is contingent on the analysis of the stabilization of the economic situation in the country, according to Julie Kozak, who's director of the IMF's communications department. According to her, she said the economic situation has been highly volatile, particularly in the light of the outlook and policy framework for the near and medium term. She said now that the economic situation has stabilized, consultations are now resuming. She also noted that holding such consultations on an annual basis fulfills the obligation of both the fund itself and the countries that are members, yes, members of the IMF, of which Russia is one. Now, the representative of the international organisation also reported that a number of interested parties are planning to be involved as part of the mission. They didn't specify with whom exactly. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. Now, you can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, as I said, protests by European countries have been a, a voiced. I mean, the IMS up and coming contacts of, with Russia have prompted some countries to uh, voice their opposition, including uh, Lithuania's Gintar Skates, who said, we are surprised by the IMS leadership uh, decision. We believe that any resumption of cooperation with Russia would be a step towards normalizing relations with an aggressor, while Russia's aggression in Ukraine continues. Now, you notice he fails to mention the aggressive attacks on Russian civilians by Western presence, uh, Western missiles, or the presence of Western mercenaries attacking in Russia itself. Now, it's actually a group of nine countries who've sent a letter to the IMF chief executive, Kristalina Grigorieva. And she basically said they believe it's a serious risk in normalization risk, uh, relations with Moscow. Now, this is signed by the so-called economic ministers of those wonderfully powerful situation countries like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark, Norway, the UK and Poland. And they said we want to refrain from resuming cooperation. I mean, these are not exactly economic powerhouses, are they? Similarly, the representatives of Belgium and France, you know, two particularly powerful military countries, uh, are saying Russia's an aggressor and we should not benefit from the IMF's advice. Now, 
It's also noted that if the IMF implements its plans, this will reduce the willingness of donor countries to continue to support Ukraine through IMF initiatives. So this will undermine the credibility of the IMF. <laughs> if you believe that, you believe anything. By the way, who thinks Russia is actually interested in advice from the IMF when it's weathered the storm of the shock and all sanctions from hell that have far from destroyed Russia's economy? We've actually made it stronger and enabled Russia to invade the West financial constraints. So you can actually look at it as, as usual as Russia's doing the IMF a favour, and more of which I'll talk about later. Now, it does appear to be a pre-truce statement in light of recent discussions in the West about the potential for a truce or a ceasefire in the near future. The feasibility of which I'm not going to discuss in this particular video. It's reasonable to conclude that the collective West, or more specifically, those parties committed to freezing the current conflict, have initiated exploratory discussions with the Russian side, possibly offering incentives for their participation in the negotiations. Now, one potential proposal could be to partially unfreeze Russia's assets. Now, don't be misled by the th this thought. It should be noted that the sanctions were not imposed by the IMF and it's the fund's decision alone is not sufficient to unfreeze the situation. However, that said, the fund's recommendation will carry significant weight. However, this will only be possible if and when, or um, maybe, a ceasefire agreement gets reached. Nonetheless, Zelensky doesn't want a ceasefire, so this IMF uh, pledge doesn't look like it's worth this paper it might be written on. Now, another potential recommendation from the IMF would be to streamline the process for international payments related to Russian foreign trade. Now, the potential imposition of secondary sanctions against third country banks has been recently pushed as a challenge to the process of payments. And we've seen this with India, China, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia under pressure from the, the US. Now, it's unclear what role the IMF plays in this situation, but the US Treasury Department has indicated it might impose even more sanctions. However, with the elections imminent in the US and the White House administration in complete disarray, the US is unable to fully engage in such negotiations. That said, it would be unwise to rely on the IMF in this case. Now, financial intelligence under the guise of negotiation is a topic. Now, there's an opposing viewpoint. It says that IMF requires contact with relevant parties in order to evaluate the impact of anti-Russian sanctions and identify the possible potential avenues for Russia and its partners and how they get around them and circumvent them. Now, it's possible to draw certain conclusions even from customs statistics and reports that the central bank is required to provide to the IMF. However, that said, the IMF is under no obligation to share these uh, plans or uh, information with the governments of the Baltics or any other state. Also, the actions of the anti-Russian European politicians will only serve to benefit the IMF mission, which can play the role of the good cop. However, a greater concern for the collective West is the question of circumventing sanctions. What they're doing at the moment is a construction of a system of interstate settlements in national currencies that are not dependent on the dollar or the euro and subject to, not subject to Western sanctions and obviously not transparent to the US Treasury, which drives it nuts. Now, it's immaterial whether this will be a currency for international settlements just among the BRICS countries or a system of clearing houses for servicing bilateral settlements between the member countries of the BRICS. I think the IMF's objective is to persuade Moscow to delay the creation of such a system at the, at the minimum. At the very least, the IMF would like to see greater transparency regarding the future settlement system for the BRICS members, which obviously includes China, Russia, India, and um, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, uh, and Iran. I think the IMF fears the breakup of the current status quo and the emergence of other institutions set up by the BRICS that will undermine its role in the world. And it's now to attempt to put some distance between itself and the US Federal Reserve and the US Treasury. I think it now wants to be seen as having a level of independence. It's possible that the IMF does not have such plans. I mean, the prospect of the global economy fragmenting into self-contained blocks like the G7 versus the BRICS plus, etc. 
Well, I've probed the IMF as a UN agency to rethink its role in the evolving global landscape. Now, from this perspective, maintaining contact with Russia in the context of this taking place uh, and a ban by the Western countries is perhaps viewed as a positive outcome. Consequently, the negotiations may be confined to establishing the format for Russia's provision of economic statistics in the prevailing circumstances, when not all of the available uh, data is for public dissemination. Also, the parties may agree on formalities for approving a new representative for the IMF from Russia. I mean, this issue is of significant importance and really does need attention because Alexei Mosin, who was the permanent representative of Russia to the IMF since 1992 when Russia became a member, was removed from his role as Dean of the IMF Executive Board by a decision of the FUD's Board of Directors. This was because he was Russian. And this was another example of the IMF being forced to obey the diktats of the US and now it's trying to assert a modicum of independence. Now the Dean is normally the longest serving active member of the fund and this is an elevated status associated with the performance of certain functions such as making announcements on behalf of the Council regarding the selection and appointment of IMF's managing director. So. It's already been announced that uh, Mikhail Makustin, the Russian Prime Minister, has approved the candidacy of Ksenia Yudeva, proposed by the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank as a replacement for Mr. Mosin as the IMF the Managing Director from Russia. So she will be taking the place now. But anyway, I'll keep you updated on what happens between the meetings of the IMF in Russia and uh, certainly on the the protestations from the Russophobic West and uh, we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. And you can also use the comments button and please do comment. I love getting your comments. I love hearing from you and I love having long chats and responding back to you. Thank you.